Hello, my name's Wujaha and this video is on scarlet fever. Scarlet fever is an infection caused by group A streptococcus and it's usually a bacteria called streptococcus pyogenes that's the culprit. Now children are predominantly affected by this. 90% of cases in children are of those under the age of 10 but people of all ages can get this. It's also seasonal uh, so most cases in the UK are in the winter and spring months. And it has a droplet transmission. So breathing infected airborne droplets produced from coughing or sneezing is how this condition transmits. Now a bit about group A streptococcus. Now they can colonize the throat or the skin and once colonized they have a few days incubation period. After that people start to get the symptoms. Now on the throat this can cause pharyngitis and if you look at this picture you can see the exact location that this would happen. We get inflammation around the pharynx. Now the bacteria releases exotoxins and they specifically cause a large amount of cytokine release from immune cells and this cytokine release is what causes the rash and the fever that you get. I'll I'll go into more detail about the symptoms. So initially we start off with quite non-specific symptoms. We start off with fever, sore throat, headaches, tiredness, nausea and vomiting. But after around 12 to 48 hours we get this blanching rash that forms on the trunk. It spreads to the rest of the body but it's important to know that it avoids the face. Now characteristically it's got a kind of a sandpaper like texture and that's really important to know about. Some people say it's more important than the way the rash looks. It's also more prominent on the folds of the skin, so the neck, axilla, groin, elbow, knees. And it also is associated with something called pastias lines. And these are straight deep red lines that you can see on the skin. If you just go on Google and type this in you can have a look at some pictures. Just like in Kawasaki's disease you can get a strawberry tongue. Now the tongue usually has a white coating on it and as the infection progresses the coating disappears leaving quite a beefy red appearance on the tongue. You can also get lymphadenopathy and you can also get circumoral pallor so that this is a paleness around the mouth. Now you may also notice that the patient has quite a red face but it's important to know that it's not the rash this is just flushing and lastly you can get enlarged tonsils and some abdominal pain so it's quite a lot to remember there so like always I've come up with a mnemonic to try and help you guys remember this one's quite easy it's just scarlet and each letter represents a different thing so you've got a sore throat circumoral pallor abdominal pain the rash, remember it's sandpaper like, lymphadenopathy, enlarged tonsils and the tongue, remember strawberry tongue. I hope that makes sense. Moving on to the diagnos diagnosis and investigations, it's actually a clinical diagnosis based on the symptoms. If we are slightly unsure we think that it could be something else we can do some throat swabs to test for streptococcus but that's really the main uh, things that we would do there is another test that we can do and it's called the serum anti streptolysin O antibody test now these antibodies are produced by the body in response to the endotoxins produced by the bacteria and these levels are used in diagnosing certain complications from scarlet fever so they're not directly helpful in the management of scarlet fever itself. Now I'll go on to these complications now I've split them up into early and late so in the early phase whilst we've still got in the early stages of this condition we can get otitis media, sinusitis and mastoiditis. What's more important to remember are the late complications so post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis this typically occurs two to three weeks after the infection and it may present with signs of nephritic syndrome like hypertension, hematuria and reduced urine output. The other one that's really important to remember 
is rheumatic fever. So just keep those two in mind. Lastly, moving on to the treatment. Phenoxymethyl penicillin four times a day works quite well. We've got some alternatives for those who are penicillin allergic. And this condition, scarlet fever, is what we call a notifiable disease. So we need to call Public Health England and let them know. I hope that makes sense. Thank you very much for listening. Please uh, like, comment and subscribe. And I'll be back with a new video soon. Bye.